shapes your, your attitude. As he said, a man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. Now, why, our, why is it that our spirit is not always active? It's on the dormant part. Why is it that you don't always do what God wants you to do as a Christian? Everything you think about is your job. Everything you think about is your family. Yes, these things are no more. You are supposed to think about them. But how come you can't pray? How come you can't study the Bible? How come you can't fellowship effectively? When we are even worshiping, some of us are still at work. When we are in the prayer meeting, some of us are still within the last transaction, trying to see if you said the word well or if you quoted right or if the money you charged was too small and hot prayer was, is going on. We are too many times conscious of ourselves that we have lost touch of the spirit. And because of that, we cannot assess the things that are freely given to us by God. Anything you labor for is not a gift from God. When I mean labor now is anything you do in the flesh without the leading of the spirit is not a gift from God. It's by your sweat. It's just by your sweat. And if you want to live by your sweat, you will suffer for long. This is our month of establishment. God wants to establish us in his word. And to get established in how to apply the word by hearing it, by saying it and living it, there are three things you must do. You must make decisions. Hallelujah. You must make decisions. Decisions is a test to application. The decision you make is a test to right application. If you have made decision today to eat, you have fed your body. If you have made decision today to listen to music, secular, or social media, you have fed your soul. But you have not made any decision to read your Bible. You have starved your spirit. Because anything secular is for the soul. Anything physical is for the body. Anything spiritual is for the spirit. Ask yourself, what decision did you make today that fed your spirit? Your decision is a determinant of the right application. Now, when you make decisions that only satisfy your body, how will God respond to you all the time? God cannot respond to you all the time. Because he said it in his word, seek ye first, what? The kingdom. So if you miss the order and you are seeking all those things, you might get them, but out of sweat. He said, it's not the God that is unrighteous to forget your labor of love. God will reward us if we make decisions to feed our spirit and to always have that decision that will bring the spirit up. The second D is determination. When you make decision, decision on its own cannot happen without determination. Because determination is a focused decision. When you make decision, determination is a focused decision. So if you say, I am going to church today, or I'm going to work today, or I want to um, do my ass chores today, I want to take care of this, it's a decision, true of us. But if you are not determined, distractions will come in and that thing will not be done. So a lot of us make decisions for God, but we are not determined to follow through. And at the same time, if you fail to be determined, you can't apply the word properly. And the last thing is, what gives power to determination is devotion. So devotion empowers determination. Determination empowers decision. So if you have made decision and it comes out wrong, check it well. Your devotion was on the wrong direction. Whenever you make decision and the decision didn't come out through, it means you didn't follow God's procedure well. Check the life of Jesus. He didn't make any mistake. Whenever it seems to look like mistake, it becomes a miracle. <laughs> Every miracle Jesus did seems like a mistake. It wasn't time for him to turn water to wine, but there was a demand. And it became a miracle. He took people to the mountainside to preach and they were, preach and they were there hungry and he fed 5,000 men out of two loaves and three fish. So whenever there is a demand on the unconditional will of God within the atmosphere of conditional will, miracle happens. If your desire is falling under the conditional will of God, there is something God wants you to do. And the thing God wants you to do is apply the word of God. In your situation now, what do you want from God? A lot of us, we need job for five years, ten years, twenty years. Some of us have not worked. 
but have God fed you? Yes. But how did he feed you? How is he taking you through this journey? He's taking you through the journey because of his unconditional will. His will is that they shall not die. God's will is for all to be what? Saved. Unconditional. But for you to enjoy the conditional will of God on earth, God's conditional will is operative. In the spirit, God's unconditional will is operative. And you know, like pastor will always preach, there is nothing physical that doesn't have its source in the spirit. So every conditional will of God you are seeking God for, you need an unconditional will to unlock it. And for you to get that done, you must learn to apply the scripture, the word of God. Don't apply the Bible. Rather, don't apply the scripture. Don't apply based on your emotional need and things you see. Apply based on what you hear from God. Because God's word for you might be different from God's word for me. And I believe this evening the word of God will go through every nook and cranny and cut off the things that hinders you from applying his word properly. Your decision is what will make it work. Your determination is what will bring it to pass. Your devotion is what will make it to stand out. As Pastor Joe, we always say that God wants to make up to stand out. By the time you stand out in your sphere, other people are coming to stand. You will not become upstanding. By the time you are becoming upstanding, you become a standard. And that's what God wants to do for you. Let's be on our feet. Now, it's a consecration message more to say how to apply the word of God. What we've just said now is an information. It will only become a revelation when you pray with it. So you need to go home and pray. Say, God, I ask you for the spirit of your word. Let there be a bet in my spirit. I will make decision to apply your word. I will be determined to follow through with that decision. And I will devote myself in order for that determination to yield its fruit. So your prayer this evening is, Father, baptize me with the spirit of your word. Baptize me with the spirit of your word. Jesus said, the word I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. I need you to let go of every burden, anything that has weighed you down, that looks so heavy right now. The word of God is here. It will make it light. He said, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden. You need to come to God right now. Come to God with your need. Come to God with your burden right now. As you begin to open your spirit and say, Father, I've heard your word. I am saying your word. And I'm living your word. Therefore, let every burden be taken off my shoulder. He said, cast all your cares upon me for I care for you. What is affecting you from hearing the word of God is your desire that is not yet come through. You cannot measure God with the standard of man. And so you need to say, Father, I empty myself right now. Every judgment that is standing before me, I let them go right now. Let your word take its course in my life this evening. And not only for today, but for the rest of my life. You said it in the last days, you will write your word in the tablet of my heart. This is the moment, Father. Because we are in the last days, write your word in the tablet of my heart. I don't know what the word I'm saying means to you or what it sounds in your ear like. But I need you to begin to pray with those words and say, Father, baptize me with the spirit of your word. You don't need to know the word to live the word. You just need to hear it. You just need to say it. What are you saying? Say what God told you. If God said you should pray, pray. If there's anything that is coming to your heart right now that you need to lay before him, just begin to say it. I surrender myself to you. I let go of everything that has made me to become heavy. Anything that has made me to become like a weight before you. The scripture says in Hebrews chapter 12 that we should lay aside every weight and every sin that easily beset us. We should look up for to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. God is doing a work in your life. God is doing a work in your family. God is doing a work about your job. God is doing a work about your joblessness. Don't focus on those things. Focus on the word this evening and say, Father, baptize me with your word. Let us 
spirit of your word come take over my mind take over my heart take over my spirit let everything i do be by what i hear you say let my ears be open to hear you on a daily basis so that i can make the right decision so that i can take the determination that will bring the result of my decision help me with the spirit of devotion In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. No matter how light the word of God is, you may not understand. You don't need to understand. All you need is just to open your spirit because what God said he will do, he has already done. He has already done. The burden that has weighed you down is lifted off your shoulders. The need that has made you to cry, God has wiped your tears. Those of us whose need will require time, at the right time, God will come through for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Those of us who need God's intervention, this week, God will intervene Amen. on your behalf in the name of Jesus. Amen. No matter the struggle your family is going through, God is bringing peace to that situation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You don't need to consider your efforts. Because the unconditional will is overshadow his conditional will for your sake. Jesus died for it. You don't need to die from it. Jesus died for it. You don't need to die from it. No matter the pain, no matter the sickness, no matter the disease, no matter the challenge. Jesus died for it. You don't need to die from it. For this reason, by the reason of the anointing of God upon this altar, I declare you free in the name of Jesus. Amen. And for as many of us who have found it difficult to live a Christian life, from today, that burden is lifted off your shoulder. You will just see yourself living the life that God wants you to live. Don't struggle anymore. No matter the situation, even the friends that lure you to do the things you don't want to do, when they see you, the light of God will push them away. They will just feel irritated to come around you to tempt you. Because the Spirit of God has come upon you today. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a clap as we celebrate him in the service. Let's celebrate God again. Hallelujah. All right, you may be seated. Let's just uh, pay a little bit of attention to the announcement. Woman to woman conference. The preparation is on top gear right now. The preparation is on top gear. I hope the women are ready for us. Let's appreciate the women. Um, whereas I'm seeing a little bit of um, ginger in the atmosphere, but I need to see more. It's looking like the woman to woman conference is for the married women. I need to see the single ladies put up the flyers and talk about it. I haven't started seeing it in Instagram. At least I have. I'm friends with many of us on Instagram. So I haven't started seeing it on Instagram. I have not started seeing it much on Facebook. I need you to advertise it, talk about it, let the people know. Um, copy all the adverts, put it on your page and talk about it. From 7th, of May, 7th and 8th of May, I think 14th and 15th of May, 21st and 22nd of May, 28th and 29th of May. That's the, third, the last program for the year. And all our speakers, by the grace of God, are ready, are ready. They are ready to be here. So make sure you talk about it so we don't have an empty hall for the people that day. Um, secondly, we have um, the premarital classes for those who are intending to marry between now and the end of the year, starting this Friday. So if you want to get married between now and the end of the year, feel free to join the class this Friday. But first of all, go to the church office and get your form and then meet with Pastor Peter so that you will be admitted into the school. All right. And then if you also don't want to wed between now and December, but you want to go through the class, you can carry your the guy or your girl you're looking um, at, your believing God with, to join the class. 
Two of you can join the class. It's permitted. You have, you have a date. You have somebody you're going out with consistently, and two of you can join the class. It is an eye-opening class. At the end of the day, if you survive the class with the person, it might be a better decision for you. And then the outreach is... The outreach, it's coming up on the 29th and 30th at Atalai Buzo. Okay, 29th and 30th, the preparation is on top gear also. Benevolence Department is going out to the Teens Church this Sunday and Okwe Hospital to intervene in the lives of people. We have General Workers Meeting this, this Saturday by 4 p.m., compulsory for all the workers so we can tidy up for the conference. We can tidy up for the conference 4 p.m., general workers meeting 4 p.m., all the pastors, leaders, HODs, members of every department, please. We need to gather by 4 p.m. I will be there by the grace of God so we can tidy up for the conference. Amen. All right, if you're ready, bring out your offerings and tithes and let's give to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, okay. The woman to woman prayers. They already know now. The woman to woman prayers is by 7 a.m. every Saturday. You don't need to be remind, reminded. This is about the, is it the last prayer meeting for the, before the program starts? This is the last prayer meeting before the program starts. Okay, so all the women, all the women. I don't see, do, do, do single ladies come for that prayer meeting? Eh? Saturday, yes. I will come for this Saturday's prayer meeting. I will be there. Let me let me see how and who comes. Praise God. All right, are you ready with your offerings and tithes? Stand with them if you're ready. Amen. Let me give you a prayer point this night. What should I give you? Okay, I need you to pray for Russia and Ukraine war. How many of us are going to pray? That war is taking a turn on the earth. You might not be feeling it, but that war is crippling the economy of the world. Let's keep praying for that war. The war is metamorphosing into what we don't expect. Personally, my prediction over the war failed because I thought that the war wasn't going to last for a month and it will come. But it's getting worse by the day. And very soon, other countries will be involved. And let me tell you, Nigeria is a major target is a major target. Nigeria is no, it is not in any way a, any, a pushover country in the world. So, as a matter of fact, my great grandfather went to Second World War. As in moved from Nigeria, Second World War happened around 1945. Between 1945 and 1948. My great grandfather went for that war and was taken out of Nigeria at that time to go fight Second World War. For my friends who has visited South Korea, they said there is a particular pillar in South Korea where the names of the people that fought in Korea War that died were written. My friend went to that war and saw the names of Igbo men on the Korean War, Google about Korean War, was fought then. I'm saying that to say that these are wars that happened between 1910 to 1940. And our great grandfathers went for that war as at that time. The one that is about to happen, you won't go anywhere, it will come to you. It's going to be a biological war. We need to pray. 
we are not praying so that there won't be I, I don't know but we need to pray I really don't know why we're going to pray but we do need to pray I don't know whether to pray to stop the war because we need to pray let God just answer us anyhow he wants to answer us because that war is part of end time calendar it's an end time calendar an end time calendar you, there's nothing you can do about it but we will pray that we are not going to be victims of that war. Victim two ways. Victim that, it's not that victim, you won't die in that war. If the war spreads and you need to die, you will die. I'll be deceiving you by telling you if the war happens globally, you won't die. No, you will die. <laughs> not being victims of the war is that I won't die unready. I will die ready. Because it's happening and everybody's keeping quiet. Everybody's keeping quiet. We don't know what is happening. If you know anybody who lives abroad, ask them. They will tell you that in the last one month, prices of things are abroad. So what will happen? The implication is that they will no longer send you money as often as they used to send you money. Because they're also trying to fight their battle now. Fuel price is increasing globally. So very soon, here in Nigeria, this thing they are begging you subsidy. They will remove it. Anything you want to do, you do. People will have cars. They won't drive it. And the ones that are trekking don't have food in the stomach that will power the leg. We need to pray. We're in end time. I hope you know. I hope you know. All these things that the Bible said is happening bef before us. So we have to be preparing ourselves. We have to be preparing ourselves. Anything can happen any day. If you think that we are just gathering together in church to clap, after clapping, we go. A day will come when we will not be here anymore. And God forbid that the trumpet sounds and you are here. You won't, you, I won't be your pastor then. People will remain, but you won't see me then. So prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. The world is collapsing and we are watching. We are watching. We are just talking nonsense, following social media, talking anything, you know. The devil is distracting us and we are all being distracted. Focus. Put yourself together, your spiritual self together. Jesus is preparing his second coming. Lift your offerings up. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege to hear your word from your man-servant, Pastor Fever. Thank you for the encouragement which I have encouraged us as a body. Thank you for the sight. Thank you for the offerings which we are bringing to you. Uh, not because you need them, but because we need them here to propagate your work and your kingdom. Father, we pray that the hands that has given, even in this season, will be blessed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father, for we pray in Jesus' name. Please pass the offering to the last person on your road. Oh, my God. 
in the house. Um, they are called um, South African Boabo. Two of them. And one day, somebody gave me two birds, chicken, two. I brought the two of them and left them in the compound. And they started moving around. First of all, the dogs tried to attack the birds. And the birds, I don't know what came over them, they braced up to the fight, as if they can. Okay, but all of a sudden, before the end of the day, all of them started playing together. So I now could see that the bird would be lying down, the dog would lie beside the bird. I've been watching these people. Sometimes the dog will be eating, the bird will go there and be eating the food. And they are just flowing together. And I began to wonder what exactly is happening that the bird didn't see the chicken again as a, a threat. The chicken didn't see the bird again or the dog as a threat. So they are just, just playing together. Now, some time ago, God told me that that's the way today's church is. We have mixed multitude. The sheep is behaving like the goat. The goat is behaving like the sheep because they have been together for too long. So you cannot know the character of the goat again from that of the sheep. You can't know the character of the sheep from that of the goat. There's a mixed multitude in the church. So it's very hard to separate who is a church member and who is not a church member, even though they, all of them are in the church. But there is something that's going to happen one day. The Bible prophesied about it. There's going to be a separation between the goat and the sheep. I don't know who is sitting beside you, whether he's a sheep or a goat. But very soon we will know. And I don't know who you are behaving like now, whether you are behaving like a sheep or a goat. But very soon we will know. Be conscious of who you are. Don't live like who is sitting beside you. Because you have sat with him or her for too long doesn't mean you should become him or her. Be who God has called you to be. Let's share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, is and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, his goodness and mercy is following us all the days of our lives, and we are dwelling in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Rest.